nor you. I see that Maxie's already brought our Bible today for our reading out of the book of Acts. We're going to wrap up Eastertide today, and the book of Acts story is the first one we're going to read for, for the season of Pentecost. But in the very first part of the book of Acts, we hear about the ascension. This story happens 40 days after the first Easter Sunday, when Jesus made his first appearance to Mary Magdalene after she discovered that the, the tomb was empty. He visited his friends and followers several times during those 40 days, and even showed his nail wounds from the cross to his disciple Thomas, who said to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Jesus helped his friends catch a net load of fish on Lake Tiberias, and even had a fish fry for all of them. In one of his letters, the Apostle Paul tells us that Jesus appeared and spoke to over 500 women and men during those 40 days. But finally, it was time for him to come to the end of his ministry among us here on the earth. On day number 40, just outside the town of Bethany, where Jesus had called some of his best friends together, he told them that it was their turn to teach the good news to others. Jesus was actually telling them, it's your turn. I'm not going to be here anymore, but it's your turn to, to go out into to Judea and Samaria and all the rest of the world. And saying that, he was saying that Judea and Samaria were two different places altogether to the people then. Judea is where their friends lived, where everyone they knew lived. And Samaria was where other people lived, even some of them that were, that were their enemies. But he was saying the good news is for all people. Then Jesus left them, hidden by the clouds. Two men dressed in white appeared to them and asked them why they were looking up into the sky. And the two men said that Jesus who left them would one day return in the same way. The story in the book of Acts was about the end of Jesus' ministry on earth, but it was also about the beginning of the ministry of the people who followed him including us. And people still talk about this story a lot and have a lot of questions about it. As a matter of fact, Charlie has a good friend that, that sent him a text with a question about this. Let's see what he and Maxie are doing right now. Hey Maxie, I just got a text from a friend who asked kind of a hard question. He's asking about um, the ascension and how it happened or whatever. So I don't, I'm not sure. I think ascension is like going up and then descension means coming back down. So going up in the sky and back down to earth, right? You found him on that well. So um, check it out. have you ever talked to Professor Oldman before? He knows everything. Why don't we give him a call and ask him what he knows about things like ascension? Want to? Okay, great. Why, it's Charlie, how are you, Charlie? And that must be Maxie. Well, I've heard so much about him. Uh, how can I help you? So, Professor, I had a friend ask me a really hard question. How did the ascension happen? You know, the story in the Bible. How did it happen? Hmm. How, how, how? A better question would be why or, or what does it mean to you? Let me think. Okay, Maxie, this could take a while. First, when we talk about the Ascension or any other stories of the Bible, especially the, the, the New Testament or, or, or Greek scriptures, let's always remember that they were written for people who lived in the first century. Jesus lived on the earth about 2,000 years ago. Hey, you know what? I have a little chart here that will, will help you understand it. He has a chart for everything. You see, people in the first century thought that the earth was flat and that the sky was a dome. They thought that when Jesus left the earth, that, that he rose up to the top of the dome because that's where they thought heaven was, just beyond the dome of the sky. Remember, Maxie, it was a long time ago. So, that was the end of the story. People in those days didn't ask how he did it. So he flew like Superman? Oh, people in those days had never heard of comic book heroes. 
And the Bible never tells us about how Jesus did anything. The story tells us why he was here and, and what he did, and, and then he was gone. We'll never know how he did it? Do we know how he healed people or brought Lazarus back to life? Ah, here's another chart. Ah, of course there is. Here is the humble bumblebee. Its body is too heavy for its wings to carry it, and its wings are too small, but it can fly. We don't know how. And here's a little friend of mine from the planet K-Men. Her name is Jewel, and she can transform from this little monster to her friendly form in an instant. We never ask her how she does it. Uh-oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You have a friend from another planet? How did she get... Oh, yeah, that's right. I shouldn't ask how. Oh, it's a good idea to ask how about things that are happening today. That's how we learn. But the best questions we can ask about things that happen in the Bible are, what does it mean to me? Or who can I help with what I just learned? Professor, you always give me more questions than answers. Why do you suppose I do that? He did it again. Well, I hate to ask and run, but, but it's Jewel's lunchtime, and she eats only banana peels and, and apple cores. Uh, okay, okay, but Professor, tell us more about Jewel from the planet Cayman. Oh, gone. He always does that. I wonder why. Oh, yeah, another question. Daffy Dill has been telling us a lot of good things about the Easter lilies all during Easter Tide, but now that that season is over, she has some other stories she'd like to tell us about other plants around the yard. Let's see what she's got today. Let's all be very quiet. These little darlings are still sleeping. They haven't bloomed yet, but they're gonna come out very soon. It's just amazing to watch the birth of new life come out in the spring. This is a peace lily. Let's give her some peace. The peace lily, what a beautiful name for a plant. Now it's time to see something that someone else has sent us. Some of our friends in, in the children's ministry. Caitlin has wanted us to know what her family's been doing during this time. And they've been doing a lot of crafts. One really special one that they want to show us today is how to make a rag rug. And, and in making a rag rug, you learn about different kinds of fabrics, you learn how to do braiding, you learn how to do a little sewing. So let's see what they've done. Do you like strawberries? I know I do. Next, Caitlin wanted us to see that Jude, Luke, and Rachel are working on something with strawberries, this time making strawberry jam. Say that strawberry jam's going to be good, isn't it? Now we're going to go next door to see what the chickens are doing.
Clecky is six weeks old and fully feathered. She's going to continue to get bigger. But all of her down is gone. Well, there's no down on those chickens, is there? Now it's time to say goodbye to the season we've been honoring all these weeks. Saying goodbye to Eastertide, but hello to Pentecost. So I'll say, go in peace, see you at Pentecost. And here's a friend of ours, Jewel, who wants to wave goodbye to you today. Go in peace again. did you expect, Sergeant Fury? Thanks for staying this long through the credits. These are the extras. We want to just say thanks for liking and sharing. It's very important and it really helps us all. Have a nice day.